it's me again. Today's date is January 26th, 2024. It's a Friday, and we're heading into Friday evening and the weekend. Last week, as most of us know, Nextbridge Hydrocarbons came out with a press release about their wells. A recently amended S1 on the 40 million shares has stated that the drilling program to come up with a financial solution that's the most cost effective for the company and that's a return on investment. The company has basically a farm out or a participation agreement that they came up with back in October. If you look at it here, it basically states that companies will pay a fee to get the rights to drill on the Johnson area. That's not the whole area of the Ore Grande, it's just the Johnson area, the Johnson blocks of the Ore Grande. Because of these cost-saving occurrences, Nextbridge has cut costs on their staff, as evident in the press release from last week, January 19th. And the company, again, shifts phase into basically cost-saving management mode as the drilling prospects can be satisfied. What were the results of the 2023 drilling plan? According to the press release on some of these wells drilled, there's the Johnson E23 number four, which is a new field discovery in the Penn Sand Formation. The company believes that this is the first viable Conventional producing well. Let's examine those words. Okay, conventional means that it's the old-timey wells where there's just a straight-down pipe. There's no fracturing involved. There's no lateral or horizontal wells involved in this. It's just a straight-down traditional well. Conventional. The initial rate of this well was 2,500,000 cubic feet per day. 1M means thousand, 2M means million. Now, again, that's that's no acid jobs, which, you know, you could use for a traditional well to help acidify the rock, dissolve it a bit, and create more porous pockets for gas to flow down into. There's no pump jack on it. It's just naturally coming out of the ground. Imagine what it would be if you had a pump on there. There is another well 5,000 feet away. The Johnson E15 number one, and that had comparable results. Next, there's another well. So, what's this new formation? Well, it's a formation in the Bliss Sand Granite Wash. Bliss Sand is pretty old, it's right at the start of the Cambrian era. However, there was a geological study by this guy in El Paso, University of Texas. And he went out and studied the bliss sand formation of the mountains north of El Paso. Conveniently, he used a number two pencil. It made me think of the MMTLP community member, number two pencil. Because half the pictures are him showing this mechanical pencil next to these formations that stick out of the ground. This formation isn't as uplifted, but it's pretty shallow. It says it's 1,400 feet is where the cap is. That's where the formation begins, you know, the cap. Here's the ground. Here's the cap. 1,400 feet down. This formation, it says it's 175 continuous feet of oil, which is pretty significant in my opinion. In addition to the size of 15,000 acres, that's, that's, you know, a formidable size, I think. Put that in perspective, 15,000 acres is 23 square miles up to 15,000 acres. So if you want to do 20 square miles at 175 feet, that could be a, a decent amount of oil you're talking about. It does say live oil. What is live oil? Well, live oil is oil in the ground, which has a bunch of dissolved gas in it. Usually it's volatile gas, which upon when it hits the surface, the gas comes out. What's a good way to think about this? Brought something. Brought. Okay, so here's a conified area. You know, it's conified. It's trapped in there. This oil is is the the uh, the liquid in here. 
And there's lots of dissolved gases that naturally occurred in this beer, right? It's when you when you brew the beer, the gas naturally occurs and dissolves in the beer. You conify it in this in this area of rock, and the gas is trapped in there. But once it hits the surface, the gas comes out, right? That's that's basically live oil. Think of it like you know a soda can or a beer can. It's it's in there. It's in the ground. It's pressurized. So there could be an artisanal effect, much like it talks about on the Johnson Wells. The Johnson Wells that came out in its own accord artisanally, eight hundred thousand cubic feet a day. I'm not sure what the flow rate of this particular wells might be. I agree with the statement that it would be significant, and we'll do the math here again. I live oil is this. It's in the ground, hits the surface, and the gases volatilize out. When live oil hits the surface, a lot of those gases will volatilize out, leaving oil. Now, what's the ratio of dissolved gas that's, that's, you know, something I'd like to know? And what kind of gas are we talking about is also something I would like to know. And I'm eager to see these well logs, which, you know, are we going to see these well logs? Speaking of well logs, some of the well logs from last year were actually posted. The site that they're usually posted on has been down. But I was able to get them earlier today, so that'll be something that we talk about in a future video as well logs. But, you know, to catch up to speed with well logs, here are some terms. Where I talk about in my last video about well logs, link below, catch you up on how to read well logs. We have rate of penetration, which is their drill rate. A fast drill rate will indicate porous rocks or very high drainage rocks. Slow drill rate indicates it's it's very compact shale. And so it's it's harder, it's compact, it's takes longer to drill. Gamma radiation, and I talked about the gamma radiation, how to read that on the side of the graph in conjunction with the rate of penetration. If you have a very fast rate of penetration, which is how fast you're drilling, meaning it's some sort of sand or, or loose shale, fractured shale, naturally fractured shale, in addition to a reading of the gamma radiation, which is, you know, more towards the left end of the graph, that's an indication of a reservoir right there. But we want to know what the reading is, the, the electrical resistance, the ohms, and then the pericity reading, if it is. These current ones don't have a pericity reading, but guess what? It has an ohms reading. So, you know, that'll be very interesting to see. Uh those well logs. The well logs that they did post were not very deep. They were shallow, which this new formation in the Bliss Sand Granite Wash is also pretty shallow, 1,400 feet. And the Johnson Wells are 2,000 feet. So it makes me think like, oh, they've, you know, got curious. They were finding stuff at a shallow area, given the well logs, and they went exploring. Okay, let's do some math now, because everybody likes it when I do math. Your area is 15,000 acres, right? It's 23 square miles. We're going to go now to cubic feet. We're going to speak in volume. Not so much in area, but area visualized 3D, volume. 23 square miles. 23 square miles. Let's run down to 20 to keep things easy. You know, and then it's up to 15,000, right? So we're going to keep rounding down a little bit. Twenty. Square miles is five by four miles, right? So if you do five miles converted to feet, four miles converted to feet times 175 feet thickness of that shale, that gives you about 96 billion cubic feet. 96 billion cubic feet. If 1% of that is saturated with this oil, right, 1%, What's the rate of saturation? I'm not sure. But let's just be low and let's just be simple, right? Let's be very conservative. What percent? That's 960 million cubic feet of oil. 960 million cubic feet of oil translates to, you know, again, a browning up here, make less barrels. It's 5.6 cubic feet per barrel of oil. Let's go to six because then we'll get less barrels. 160 million barrels of oil over a 15,000 acre 
area. But again, again, that's like conservative. I need to know what's the pericity rate, you know, and what's once I know that and a little bit more of the bliss sand granite wash, we can get a more accurate description of how much oil is there. But for now, you know, 160 million is conservative. Speaking of gas, the Amarilla Helium Depository got sold the other day. However, you know, helium is used for MRIs as it keeps the magnets cool. So, in the terms of this news, you know, helium sales went up today throughout the stock market. Hooray! It might be a time to invest in helium. But, you know, if uh, if some of that gas down there is helium, helium is a, is a natural byproduct of natural gas. Link below to the article talking about the helium sales. It mentions the party balloons. People have been talking about the party balloon thing for the past 10 years. And, again, my homework, I guess, going forward is to find out what the saturation capacity is for the Bliss Sand Granite Wash. But seeing 175 continuous feet of live oil, you know, got me a bit excited. Okay, guys, that's it for today. Again, uh, you might want to go review the past well log video I did. So we can catch up to speed, and then we can talk about some of the well logs of the next bridge from 2023. I will see you soon. Goodbye.